Today marks the start of what I hope will become a weekly app discovery series. I've been getting a lot of feedback as people watch my iPad app reviews in particular, saying, please make this a weekly series. So that's what we're gonna try. But instead of just focusing on apps for iPads or iPhones or Macs, I'm gonna kind of combine things and give you a variety of apps for all your different Apple devices. Real quick before we get started, your iPhone videos deserve better. I wanna teach you how to make your iPhone videos unforgettable. Now's your chance to buy one, get two of my courses free when you pre-order my iPhone Video Essentials course, which will give you instant access to learning to be productive and Freeform Unleashed, two of my hit courses instantly and for free. In my new course, I'll show you how to turn ordinary shots into pro quality videos in no time. Now's a great time to hop on board and join our course communities. I wanna personally thank Stein, Simon, and Lori for their recent purchases. The three for one deal is only available during the pre-order, so don't miss out. Three courses for the price of one linked up down below. All right, the first app we're gonna check out today is an iPhone app. It's called Bebop Quick Notes. What's really cool about this is its simplicity. You can capture notes as text files and they can be archived natively to your iCloud drive. So when you open up the app for the first time, it's gonna say, set up your archive, choose a location. I'm gonna select just my regular on my phone folder, hit open there and file extensions will be in TXT. You can also set up in .md if you wanna be using this with Obsidian, which is really cool. Now I'm gonna show you my favorite feature here in just a second, but let's use voice dictation to just create a very simple note here real quick so you can see what that interface looks like. And then I wanna draw your attention to this icon in that yellow strip at the top. When you tap on that, it's gonna let you quickly cycle through various recent notes that you've made so you don't have to go digging around through a whole folder structure or look at tags or search or anything like that, which is great because sometimes you're in the flow and you know that you just said something or noted something and you just wanna get back to it as soon as possible. And I love that this is built to do that. Let's tap on the settings and see what we've got here. You can of course change where you're storing files. You can change that file name format like you could at the setup. You can go in and set up uh, your header and footer formatting. So if you wanna include a title, you can do that. If you wanna include dates, you can do that. You can even change the format that the date appears. You can add a footer that's automatically appended. So you could say something like save with Bebop because a lot of people will probably end up using this as their entry point, their starting place when they create a note. And there's also ability to use custom templates. Now that is a pro feature. So everything I've talked about so far is free, which is great. You can upgrade to the pro version for a one-time payment of $4.99. So at least it's not a subscription. Theme colors, you can match the app icon to the theme color. You can flash back for a certain amount of notes. So just some really nice add-ons that honestly you don't need. They're just kind of like things that you would do probably if you wanted to support the app developer. Otherwise, pretty much all the functionality that you want is there for free, which is pretty cool. Speaking of pretty cool, before we get any further, if you're looking for the wallpapers, because I get a lot of comments, there's a link in the description to get you every wallpaper in the Daily Tech store for 90% off. So it's like $5 for hundreds of wallpapers. Now we're gonna be looking at an iPad app next called Wand, which lets you bring your drawings to life. This is really cool. So you can sketch your ideas and then apply some different styles and basically end up with a final product that looks very polished, even if you're not a professional artist or drawer. So this is interesting. There's a big discussion going on right now of whether AI is good in general or bad and generative AI, is it going to replace artists or is it gonna enhance their art? I think this one makes a pretty good case for enhancing creativity because you can create private models here. They're your tools and they're crafted from your own images and styles, they don't feed those models into a larger system. So it's not like Adobe who's gonna take all your art and train their models off of it and try to put you out of job. You're in control here, it's your work, your rights, and this is cool. So this is what it looks like if you just kind of sketch something and then you have the AI apply its AI-ness to it and it just makes a huge difference. I like the different custom styles. So you can really change how things look here with just a tap. And also like things that are made specifically for the Apple Pencil that really enhances what you can do with your iPad and highlights how it's different from the Mac as a platform. Really, it's cool if you have an idea in your head, you can just kind of make some basic sketches, work with the colors, and then let the AI sort of bring your ideas to life in a way that you can't just do with basic prompting in mid-journey, for instance. All right, so just for fun here, let's try drawing a very basic bird shape something like a cardinal or something, and uh, just see how it handles making this bird. For the prompt here, I'm just gonna say a red cardinal-like bird, photorealistic. Let's go with this fantasy look and just kind of see what this comes up with. And there's the cardinal. Actually, not too bad, is it? The feet are a little bit weird, 
but I could sit here and tweak this and play around with it. It's already good enough. This is cool. There's several apps like this, but honestly, that's a great starting place. You could continue to tweak this for sure, but I like that. It's nice and simple. For the use cases, you can do concept art, you could do comics, maybe some fashion design, you could just do some painting, but game assets, if you're a game designer, if you wanna do some prototyping, those are all things that you can easily do here. And then what's cool is you can generate multiple versions of the things that you draw. So you can really explore all the different variations. If you're like, Chris, why would I use this? Oh, I don't know, maybe you wanna boost your creativity or save some time, stay cutting edge, you want something that's affordable, or for the non-artists out there, maybe you just wanna be able to express yourself with your iPad and your Apple Pencil. Well, now you can. It's kind of like Fernando Silva said, he's the latest person I interviewed on my new Side Unseen interview series. You might know him as the main video host over on 9to5Mac for the last couple of years, and he's somebody who actually uses the iPad for their heavy duty tasks. Well, I feel like Wand is another tool that can help you get some heavy duty, intense work done on your iPad. Almost like this is one of those, oh, that's why the iPad exists sort of moments. We're gonna switch over to the Mac now and we're gonna look at an app called Cleft, which lets you capture and share notes with Cleft's AI Scribe. You know when I said earlier that Bebop would be a notes app that you might wanna start notes in because it's nice and simple and quick and then export those for archiving to some other app. I view Clef Notes as another interesting way, maybe more useful way to start notes as well. Now this is available on multiple platforms. I like the Mac version the best. It's even on the iPad, but it's so new right now that you'll have to do a test beta version. But here's the gist. You voice your notes, but it's not just transcription. It's gonna automatically format your notes for you. And that's where all the benefit is. It really saves you time. It'll put things into bullet point lists. It'll give you the headings. And then you can come in and edit everything with Markdown. And then the real magic happens when you can create shareable links and or export those nodes to your favorite apps, including Obsidian. But you can use something like Zapier to connect up different apps as well. You can just flow when you're voicing your notes in a whole different way than when you type. And here it's going to happen with privacy in mind. So it's private by default. It's encrypted with CloudSync on device transcription. If you don't want to be spilling all your company's secrets out into the internet world, that's nice, of course, but so are the iOS widgets. That's right, widgets. One of these days here, I'm gonna show you my ultimate iPhone and iPad home screen with all the different widgets from some really clever and cool apps. And this would certainly be among them because it gets rid of the complexity of note taking. The first time you try making a note here and then you see that it automatically synthesizes what it is, the gist, the kernel of what you were talking about, simplifies it and just puts it in such a nice, minimal, simple format. You're like, wow, I really can't believe this. This is awesome, but you have to try it to understand. The basic version is free. There is an upgraded version for $8 a month. Basically, the main differences would be longer record limits and being able to work with attachments. Now, the next app is one that's really, really cool. This developer reached out to me. That happens every now and then. Oftentimes, I have to ignore those requests to check out apps. This one, I was like, oh, wow, I actually have to feature this. It helps you avoid distractions and those dopamine hits by turning your iPhone minimalistic. Now in the productivity course, I talk a lot about strategies that can help you get rid of distractions, but strategies aside, being able to incorporate a useful tool that just turns your phone into a really sleek, gorgeous, minimal interface, almost like a light phone, L-I-T-E. I mean, that is actually really useful. So what you do as you're getting this set up is you pick your essential apps, right? So it could be messages, photos, Safari notes, and settings, for instance, if you wanna add in your phone or your camera, Apple Maps or whatever, any of your other apps, you can do that, but you want to keep it pretty minimal. So I'm just going to stick with those for the moment. Now, here's what a lot of people aren't going to like. It's not free. There is a subscription here, but it's like, what is your time? What is your focus worth? Sometimes you get what you pay for. $2.99 a month is probably what you want to do if you just want to try it out and see how it works. Once you get it set up, you start to appreciate the actual transformation your phone goes through. So here are all the dumb phone widgets. I mean, this is the one you're gonna add, but there's also some spacers as well. So I'm gonna hit add. And you can see, I still have my normal phone wallpaper going on. So step two is to set the wallpaper. And there's videos actually to show you how to do this. I'm just gonna go ahead and save the wallpaper that comes with. I'm gonna set it as a pair. Now look what I'm left with, a super, super minimal phone screen here. It's like mental relief already. Here's the essential things I need to get to, but I'm not feeling drawn into social media doom scrolling, checking out any kind of shopping or advertising. It's like the drug that is my phone already has less of a pull on me, right? Pretty cool. Let's be honest, you can stack strategies like in my productivity course with some of Apple's built-in tools like focus modes, along with something like this, and you have far less of a chance of getting off track and a much better chance of actually staying focused. 
Speaking of staying focused, I want to clue you into time align. This isn't necessarily productivity focus, although kind of, it's more about focusing your goals and your life over the long haul. And I'm showing it off here as an iPhone app, but really the reason I'm covering it is for the Apple Watch integration. This is so cool. It's a way to align your daily activities, the things that you're getting up to every day, with your long-term goals and planning. And I really like the way that you can categorize your time and build out some schedules and then track the time that you're staying focused. And then the whole benefit, the light at the end of the tunnel, is being able to get your actions to align with your intentions. This is really powerful stuff here because often we live our lives by default and not by design. Again, I know I'm parroting a lot of the stuff that's in the productivity course, but it's hard to do if you're not tracking the data. And this lets you uncover the progress and insights. On top of that, this is one of the apps that actually makes good use of live activity widgets. So you can see on your home screen where things stand. Cool design, I can always appreciate an app that has good design. Even in the onboarding screen, you can just see it. It's really nice. You wanna have an app that's pleasant to use, right? So there you go, this seems like a good place to wrap up what hopefully is gonna become a weekly series, but I need your feedback. Let me know, what did you think? Did you like seeing apps for a variety of devices or do you prefer videos that focus on one device over the other? Before you answer though, here's the thing. When I come out with one of those really popular, unbelievably useful iPad app videos, for instance, and I've done ones for the Mac that have done well, for the iPhone that have done well too. It's just like, I save those up for a really long time. And when I get enough to make a really great video, not just a video, but a really great video, then I put them into a video and compile them and share that with you. But I feel like it's gonna be more sustainable if we break it out and kind of have different apps for the different platforms. And I feel like that makes sense too, because a lot of people don't just have just an iPad or just a Mac or just an iPhone, and they like to see what all is going on, what's available, for the whole ecosystem. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to check out my new series, Sight Unseen. I'm interviewing all kinds of people, including a lot of people you see here on YouTube in the Apple space, but we're gonna expand. I'm gonna be talking to different CEOs and creative people that run creative agencies and stuff. I'm really excited about it. Again, every wallpaper in the Daily Tech store is part of the Mega Bundle sale right now. So you can get the Mega Pack, which is all the wallpapers, hundreds of files for 90% off. It's like $5. That's linked up down below. Check out the new course, get that pre-order in so you can take advantage of this buy one, get two free deal. That's amazing. It's only gonna last for the pre-order. Thanks for hanging out today. Get subscribed if you want more videos like this and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.